Nothing's changed my life more than this one secret, Greg. I, I, I could go on and on about this one because this is the gold right here. But for many years as a Christian, decades, I'd come to God, here's my request, please, and then I'd just leave. And I wouldn't even give him a chance to talk back. Now, who of us could get away with that in our marriage? I was going to say, if you did that with your wife, Stacy, you're in trouble, John. Yeah, or with a good friend. You just can't imagine sitting down, talking at them, and never giving them a chance to talk back. So here's what we want to do. We want to open up the conversation. Four times in John chapter 10, Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice. It is your right as a son or a daughter of God to hear the voice of God. Okay, and we practice that by letting him talk back to us. So yes, here's my request. Here's my prayer, Lord. Please come into my work today. Please come into my health. You betcha. But then pause and just listen for a moment and just say, Father, do you have anything that you want to say to me? Okay, let him tell you he loves you. Let him tell you it's going to be okay. Let him into the conversation. And this, like every other form of prayer, is something we grow in. It's something we mature in. People say, oh, I don't hear the voice of God. Give it some time, okay? And, and don't start with the urgent questions, you know, should I quit my job? You know, okay? Okay, over time, if you'll just give him a little room, folks, God loves to speak to us. And listening prayer will become actually one of the favorite parts of, of your prayer life. You say, here's the problem. Most of us don't quite share God's fervent passion for maturity. Is that why maybe we don't see answers to prayers like we'd like to see? It's true, Greg. We shoot up these little baby prayers, infant prayers, which early in your life are fine. I think God gives you some, some freebies, some grace. But, but John says in his epistle, I write to you children, I write to you young men, I write to you fathers, okay? You see a growth there. God is deeply committed to growing each of us up in our life in Christ, in our faith. And how is he gonna do that? Other than putting us in difficult situations, right? Hebrews says that Jesus himself was perfected through his suffering. It's in the hard times that God is shaping our character, he's building our faith, and he's teaching us more mature ways to pray. So early on in our life, it might be help, <laughs> okay? And that's all we got. Sometimes even as you get older too, that can be our prayer. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. But as we go on, we actually learn to pray. We, we get better at it. We, it's more comfortable to spend 10 or 15 minutes in prayer rather than 30 seconds. And as you grow in that, you bet you're gonna see better results to your prayers. And I was gonna ask you that, is that when we do have that maturity, and like in the Bible says, it's time to get onto some solid food here. Exactly. And is that the same way it works in prayer? The more mature you are, then maybe you're more discerning on how to pray? Exactly, Hebrews says we have trained our senses, right? We've trained our discernment, and we know more of how God is working in a particular situation. So now when somebody you know, says, pray for my parents, they're, you know, they might get a divorce, I don't just jump straight in to reconcile them because I know God's after their hearts. Lord, work in their hearts. What is the character change you are trying to do in that marriage? I'm praying with God's purposes and then the outcome will be reconciliation. You see, we mature in our understanding of how God works in the world. Somebody has an idea, and I mean, there's this teaching that goes out there that, you know, God wants us happy, He wants us successful, He wants us prosperous, mm -hmm. and when those things don't happen, oh, I guess God doesn't answer prayer. So let's look at Elijah real quick. Mm -hmm. Top of Mount Carmel, okay? Israel's been in a three-year drought. Now, God said, I'm gonna end the drought. But the beautiful thing is, he says, I, I, Elijah, I want you to pray it, you to pray it in. So people might remember the story. Elijah goes up on Mount Carmel. He's got his servant with him. He gets down on his knees. Lord, please send the rain. And then he says, go have a look. Anything changing in the weather? The servant comes back, says nothing. Dry as a bone. He doesn't give up. He goes to prayer again. We, we pray for rain. Go have a look. Eight times. Right? Eight, most of us would have given up by yeah. then. We'd be down at Starbucks talking about how God doesn't answer prayer. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right? Yeah. He sticks with it. Right? And that's just one piece of learning to grow up in prayer is, is learning a, a tenacity 
Don't give up. Stick with it. God is doing things in you and through your prayers that you just don't see yet. You know, and I wonder how many times that we have given up where we may have just been on the verge of an answered prayer. And, I may, and maybe we'll find that out in heaven. Right. But right. I think the perseverance part of it, I think of Daniel too. Yeah, exactly. You know, 21 days. Right, three weeks? Who of us would have stuck at it for three weeks? Daniel chapter 10, where he gets a vision, he doesn't understand it, so he asks God for the interpretation. Three weeks later, the angel shows up, and this is a very important biblical story. The angel says, God actually sent me the day you first prayed. I, I, as soon as God heard you, he answered your prayers. Three weeks, I have been battling the kingdom of darkness to get to you, Daniel. And now here's the answer to your prayer. Friends, we live in a world at war. Yeah. Okay, it's not just us and God and why isn't he doing things? I mean, this is a world of a great battle between good and evil. And your prayers can make an enormous difference in that. We've all prayed for people we loved and cared about. They weren't healed. What do we do with that? And how do we maintain that passion to keep praying when we don't see answers to prayers that we're really desperate to see answered? Yeah, first you have to start with the broken heart there uh, uh, of inviting Jesus into your disappointment, inviting him into your loss of heart because we want to give up. We, we want to abandon something so beautiful and powerful as prayer. And what I want to say is God is always good. You've got to hang on to that. God is always good. We may not always see his goodness in this earth, but God is always good. And don't give up next time. Because yes, not every prayer is answered the way we want, but a lot of them are. Yeah. A lot of our prayers are. And so don't let one big disappointment keep you from pressing on in the future, praying for other loved ones or praying for his guidance or, you know, your life of prayer with God is so important. Don't give up. How about praying for people that you want to see know Jesus mm -hmm. and you've been praying for 35, 40 years. Mm -hmm. I know they, they have their will, the prayer of intercession, intervention. Yes. How do we, again, maintain that, that passion that you talk about, that confidence, that authority, yeah. when we're not maybe seeing the results that we desire to see? Okay, you are battling for a human soul. You are in the fight. You are partnering with God. So this isn't going to just go quick, folks, right? Not, a marriage isn't quick. Parenting isn't quick. Prayer isn't quick, okay? Sticking with it. And praying some of those scriptures, for example, Paul says in 2 Corinthians that the God of this age has blinded the mind of the unbeliever. Well, we pray into that. Lord, take away the blinders. Jesus, break through the cloud and the veil of unbelief. We use the scriptures to pray for the unbeliever. Paul has this beautiful prayer in Ephesians 1 that God would reveal himself to you. We pray that, Lord. Open the eyes of their hearts as Paul prays. So we can use the scripture with great power in prayer. I just want to get to one thing, and we're just about out of time here. But a lot of people, they would not say this, but it's in their action. God is sovereign. He'll do whatever he wants anyway. My prayers don't really matter. Exactly. And you do not see that in scripture. Book of Acts, chapter 12. Peter is in prison. James has been killed. They're about to kill Peter, but it says this, but the church was praying strenuously for him. Same word used of the prayers of Jesus in Gethsemane. That's how hard they're praying, mm. okay? They intervene in prayer. Peter is set free. Okay, folks, you have a role in the kingdom of God here on earth. God uses prayer. It's not just zap and it's over, right? We are his partners. It's just like the gospel. God could broadcast the gospel to the whole world tomorrow, let everybody know about Jesus, but that's not how he does it. He uses you and me.